your back. Or this is the first time. Or I don't know. Hey, kids, my name is Mr. Krause. This is Mr. Krause Math. My web or my YouTube channel is Kendrick Krause. I can spell that out for you. It's K E N D R I C K K R A U S E. If you want to look up my YouTube channel, just go there. I got all those videos. Or I've got these all, all of these things in the show notes. There's a link, but you can simply go to www.mrkraus. That's an S. Math. Dot com. Find I have, and then you go to Regents Review, and make sure you go to Algebra 1. Don't go to Algebra 2, unless, of course, you're in Algebra 2. And then there's lots of cool stuff for Algebra 2 there, too. So, lot, all of the solution manuals, or all the solution videos, nicely organized. I have the video, the test you can download, the multiple choice answer, poof, right there for you. And then all of these videos nicely broken down at that site. So, you can go there. But here's my warning to you all, and I always say this, and don't take bad. One kid yelled at me and said, what do you think we're going to do? And I'm like, whatever, dude, seriously? But here's my warning to you. If you're here and you haven't done the work yet, that's called le cheating in French. In English, it's just called cheating. Got to have the le, because it makes you sound cool. But uh, you need to do the work. You need to try this on your own. You need to get frustrated. You need to toss things around your room. You need to yell at your mom when she says, what's wrong? You say, nothing. Math sucks. And then eventually you'll figure it out. So here's my suggestion. Try the problems. Look at the answers. Not my solution video. Not here. If you're here, then you should have struggled already. And more importantly, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the I like Mr. Krause button. Hit... Let's rock and roll. All right, kids, enough of the lectures. Um, we are here to do Algebra 1, Common Core, August 2014. And Mr. Key's here to help you. Unfortunately, these things all come up in single pages, so I'm going to be sitting here going ding, 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 ding every time. It's kind of annoying. So anyway, here's our first question. Which statement is always true is not always true um let's go through this real quick we'll go in reverse order dunkin donuts thank you you're still not sponsoring me but i don't care i still drink your coffee ah, delicioso thank goodness there's a dunkin donuts right around the corner all right let's see the sum of two, a rational number and an irrational number is r irrational. So that would be something like 3 plus pi. Well, that's still a crazy number because this is crazy. Or 3 plus radical 2 because these are the irrationals. These are the rationals, right? Well, that would be 3 plus, in this case, in this case is 3 plus 3.14. 1592. So then it'll be like all that would be would be 6 plus 6 point blah 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 blah. This is 3 plus 1.414 blah 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 blah. And so that would just be 4 point blah 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 blah. It'd still be irrational. So this one is always true. It's always irrational. The sum of two rational numbers is always rational. Yeah, of course. If I add 3 plus 4. If I add 3 plus 4.5, 3.4.55, 5, as long as it's a terminating decimal. If I add 1 half and 3 fourths, eh, whatever. Yeah, whatever that is. We don't like fractions. But it turns out to be another fraction. And fractions are rational, so that's not it. The product of two rational numbers is rational. Same idea. If I multiply two fractions together, I get a fraction. If I multiply two whole numbers or two decimals, I get none. So this is the winner. Now, to give you an example of when it is not true, let me give you an example of when it is true. When it is true is something like 3 times pi. That would be 3 pi, which would be irrational. Or 3 times the square root of 2, because these are the most famous irrational numbers. Square root of 2, any radical that you can't take the square root of is irrational. And... Uh, pi is irrational. So this would be 3 square roots of 2. So that's when it would be true. 
When it's not true is when you do something like this. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Now, for simplistic sake, that's the square root of 4. But the square root of 4 is 2, and then it becomes rational. So there's your example. If you want, you can, do, you can pick any radical. Radical 5 times radical 5, and you would get radical 25, which, of course, everybody knows is 5. Don't pick radical 9 times radical 9. Why? Because radical 9 is rational. It's 3. All right, moving on. So how many of you, you can raise your hand. I'll, I'll see it. You just raise your hand. You can just be like, I'm raising my hand. I'm not kidding you. I read this problem. I started to read this problem, and I immediately thought, oh, my God, this has to be a difficult problem. There's so many words. It's like three sentences. Hold on. That's fine. One sentence, two sentences, and then a question. Oh, my God, two sentences and then a question. Like three full sentences. It's got to be done. I'm not kidding you. I look at these problems. I'm like, oh, my God, i got to read this freaking math problem. Can't you just give me an equation to solve? I like solving equations. I don't like doing this crap. Then you got to settle down and do it anyway. So a satellite television company charges a one-time, a one-time, that means it's not be repeating installation fee, and then a service charge, something that's going to happen over and over and over and over. It's like Time Warner. They just keep charging you over and over and over. They don't charge me because I got rid of them. Yay. Thank you, Dunkin' Donuts. You're still not sponsoring me. So if I take a look at this equation, this equation right here, y equals 40 plus 90x. I'm not going to freaking even look at the rest of this problem because I'm going to eventually. But this thing happens one time. I, have, I get charged $40 one time. But because this is multiplied by x, I get charged at when it's 1. I get charged when it's 2. I get charged when it's three, I get charged when it's four, da, 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 da. So this one happens over and over and over again. This one happens once. So this would be my monthly service charge, and this would be my, oh no, excuse me, this would be my one-time fee, and this would be my monthly service charge. And I think it should be obvious that X probably represents one month, $90, two months, $90, three months, $90. And then y, is the, y then would be my overall cost. So let's see what we're asking. Which statement represents the meaning of each part of the function? Oh, Y is the total cost. Check. X is the number of months. Check. $90 is the installation fee. And $40 is the service charge per month. See this? Anytime it's per something, it should be multiplied by something. And the only thing being multiplied by something is the 90. So that, I don't think that's it. Y is the total cost, check. X is the number of months, check. $40 is installation fee, check. $90 is service charge, and there's your answer, kids. Number two. Oh my God, that took me like an hour to explain to probably the easiest question. But it, all these, don't get cold crazy. I do it every time. So what you, you know what, I can say this. I, I'm gonna say it. I do it too. I'm like a almost 50 year old math teacher, and I've been teaching for 20 years, and I look at a problem with three sentences and go, oh, crap. But then you got to go, all right, let me just get through it. All right, so man up, woman up, whatever you are, let's do it. All right, There's, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this problem. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this problem. I'm going to show you the mathematical way, and then I'm going to show you the let's cheat way. So we're gonna, what we need to find out is the roots. What they're asking you to actually do is factor this thing. So in order to factor it, the first thing I ought to do is take out the G... C F. Well, the GCF in this case is 4, and I'm left with x squared minus 25 equals 0. Now, I hope your teacher taught you to factor, because if you factor this, you get, very simply, because it's the difference of perfect squares, two things that are perfect squares being subtracted, x and x plus 5 and minus 5. So my two answers are x equals negative 5, and x equals positive 5. Now, don't go just go on and hit this for, fast forward button because I taught you something, you know, because I gave you the right answer. Let's see if I can show you another way to do this problem, another way to do this problem, or another way to check to make sure you have the right answer. One of the ways to kick butt on this Regents exam is to be able to do a problem two different ways. My voice just squeaked. 
So what I'm going to do is check these answers. I'm going to say, okay, take 5 and stow it into X. Now, if you don't have this calculator, this calculator is the TI Inspire. Um, it's an expensive calculator. I think it's a little over $100. But if you take that and spread it out over the next six or seven years of co you know high school and college, even if it's just spread over four years of high school, it's well worth it. It's like 25 bucks a year. It's an amazing calculator. And if you don't have it, I would suggest getting it because all of my videos I'm going to be using it in. Here's a great feature. I can store X, and then I can just type this in. 4X squared minus 100. That was the original problem. Oops, not 1,000. Uh, that was the original problem. Look at that, 0. And then I could take negative 5 and stow it into X. Now, I don't have to retype that last line in. Oh, shut up. Shut up. X, I hit it, X. And I don't want to have to retype that line. I just hit the up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. Hit that and say, I want you. Boom. Enter, enter. Zero. There it goes. Next problem. Um, let's see if I can do a little bit of information on this one. The range on this one is from 30,000 to 38,000, so that's 8. The range on this one, notice I don't care about the zeros too much, it's 8. Uh, the range on this one is from 29,000 to 65,000. Holy crap, now i got to do math. 65, that's 36. Okay, that's huge mungus. All right, the median. The median on this one is the average of these two because it's I got four. I got to take the average of those two. The average of those two would be 34.5, 34,500. The median over here, it would be the, oh, man. Ah, they're 1,500 away from each other. That's 750. That would be 36, 36. Point thirty six thousand two hundred and fifty, and this is thirty four thousand five hundred. All right, I don't know the means. The means I'd have to find those. That wouldn't be too difficult. But let's see if I can get the question. The median salary of both companies is greater than thirty seven. Uh, that's not true. The mean salary. Oh, I didn't do means yet. The salary range in company two range is greater in company two than in company one, 36 and eight. Oh, there, that looks like the right answer right there. Uh, oh, not this one. I don't, I don't even know about this one yet. Hold on. This looks like it's the right answer, the, ra the range, three. The mean age of the workers in company one is greater than the mean age of the words. Are, so I really should find the mean just to make sure. So... Uh, it was, I'm, I'm not going to do the, uh, I'm just going to do 30, 32, 35, 30 plus 32 plus 35 plus 38. Enter, oops, okay. 38, enter, divided by 4. So the average is, oh, that's one thing I, you just got to hit control enter. 8. So 38.4, 38.4. So it's really 38,438 or whatever, something like that. Now, it should be obvious that this one's going to have a mean uh, uh, higher. The, the lowest number is just about the same, but the higher number is ginormous. Uh, so let's go 29... Oh, this one I'm going to have to do the zeros. 29,000 plus 35 zeros plus 37, 1, 2, 3, plus 65, 1, 2, 3. Enter. And then divide by 4. And I'm going to put a decimal point on there. So, And then that's 40. So that's 41,000. So... Uh, this one's definitely higher. Two is definitely higher, so that's not going to work. And then it says the mean age of company one uh, is greater than the mean age of the company two. 
the mean age of these. I don't know. So 25, 27, 25 plus 27 plus 28 and 33. 28 plus 33. Enter, divided by 4, 28.25. And the other one is 25, 28, 25 plus 28 plus 29 and 31. 29 plus 31. Enter, divided by 4. Oh, their mean ages are exactly the same, so that's not it. All right, number three. There it is. I knew that anyway. I mean, the range was so far away and so car crazy. It was at 65,000, man. I want to be that guy. Yes. Which point is not represented on the graph? So here's a little test-taking strategy for you. I'm going to show you two ways to do this problem. Uh, one of the test-taking strategies, if you're going to try the points, is always try point number four first. Okay? So if I plug in three, I get three squared min or plus three times three minus six. That's what I put. That's that equation. So that would be nine plus nine minus six, which would be 12, not six. There's my answer. Now, don't go away. Let me show you another way to do that, because I don't know for sure if that's correct. I don't know. I don't know for sure if that's correct. I think it is. By the way, testing these ones with all these negatives will be a pain in the keister. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my calculator, and I'm going to graph this sucker. Come on. I hate having all these graphs open. Let me close this stuff. No. Go back in. Okay. So it's x squared. So x squared plus 3x, 3x minus 6. Enter. Eh, whatever. Control T. The table's the most important thing. So let's see if these points are on there. I know one of the points was negative 6 something. N negative 6, 12. Boom, there it is. Negative 4, 2. Boom. Negative 4, negative 2. Boom, there it is. That's not it. That's not it. 2, 4. Gotta go down. 2, 4, there it is, boom. And 3, negative 6, 3, negative 6 is not there, it's 3, 12. So there's another way. That's probably the best way to do that problem. That way you don't even have to do any work, you just use the calculator. If you can use the calculator, man, it will help you out. This calculator is awesome, and I'm not getting any help. It's called the TI Inspire. I'm telling you, it's approximately $100, $120 probably. Do me a favor. Do not buy a yellow one on Craigslist. That is stolen property. The only people that are allowed to have yellow ones are schools. If you, you are complicit in a theft and you do not want to do that, $100 is not worth it. If your school doesn't have these, ask them to get these. These are really good calculators. I'll show them to you in a minute. Actually, if you want, I can show them to you now. Oops, that's just my video stuff. Uh, control N, www.amazon.com, T, T, I, Inspire, C, X. You don't need the C, A, S. C, A, S is just crap. T, I, Inspire, C, X, calculator. So this is it right here. Oh, yeah, just like I said, it was about 100. You don't need a CAS, just to see. That's just computerized. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's right there. It's $127. Over time, it's going to re... I mean, this thing is really, truly, it's awesome calculator. And I know, I know, take that, you know, let's do a little math lesson. If you want to do a little math lesson, we can do a little math lesson. Take 120, let's do 125 divided by 4. It's approximately 20, you know, 30, 30, $30 a year. Can you afford $30 a year? Can you afford $30 a year? I can. Anyway, let's get going. We have two models. We've got the cost function, which is C of X, and that's three. Here's another one of those problems, right? Wow, that's like one, two, three, four, five, six lines. Oh my gosh. I've already read the problem, so let's go through it. The cost function is this. 
the revenue function or the amount of money I'm going to make is this, negative 0.5x squared plus 800x minus 100. And what we want to do is we want to take r of x and subtract off c of x. So everything in c of x is getting subtracted. So c of x started out as 300x minus 250, or plus 250, excuse me. But now I want to subtract it all. So everything gets subtracted. So really what I'm doing is I'm subtracting off the 300x, and I'm subtracting off the 250. So I'm going to come over there and put these with these, these two things. I'm going to subtract off the 300x. I'm going to subtract off the 250. The most people would forget to do that part, which is probably why 150 is one of the answers. Thank you, Dunkin' Donuts. You're still not sponsoring me. So negative 0.5x squared. We're subtract. We're just going to 800 minus 300 is plus 500x. A negative 100 and negative 250 is negative 350. And kids, that would be this choice problem right here. Kaching. What is one point that lies in the solution set of the system of inequalities graphed below? Well, I need something that's over in this area. This is the solution set. I'm tired of this pen. Give me my cool blue pen. Oh, cool blue pen. I want something over in this area. So, 7, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros right there. That looks like a good possibility. 3, 0 is, now this is where they get you. This is 3, 0 right here. Now, the reason that most kids will select that one is because you think it's the point of intersection. But remember, if this is a dotted line, remember, that's a hidden line. It's sort of like an invisible barrier that you cannot see, which means anything that's on that line don't count. You can't count the points that are on that line. Don't count. Can't count them. So this one, even though this one looks like the right answer, it is not. 0, 7 is right here. They'll find another point on a line. No. And the last one is negative 3, 5. That's way over in this area. So the answer is number 1, 7, 0, kids. 7, 0. What's next? 8? Yes! Problem number 8. Finally a short problem. All right, so it's time to man up and own up to things. I am not going to lie. I missed this question. I pretty much can take every one of these tests and miss one question almost every single time. Like I did every single Algebra 2 exam and I missed one point on every question, on every test. What? <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? It's crazy. So I missed this question because I read it too quickly. I read y-intercept. Actually, I, I just saw the word intercept. I'm like, oh, they must be looking for the y-intercept, not the x-intercept. So there's a couple of different ways of doing this problem. One, I could graph it. Let me graph it. Oh, before I can graph it, i got to solve for it. But yeah, you know what? Solving for y in this problem is kind of a pain. So here, let's just do it the right way. Uh, purple. So if it's an x-intercept, y is equal to 0. If it is a y-intercept, x is equal to 0. Now, why is that the case? If I graph a line, and I want to talk about this point, that's the x-intercept. That point is something, comma, 0. If I'm talking about this point, which is the y-intercept, that's 0, comma, something. You didn't go left or right, you just went up. So remember, it's backwards. So whenever I'm talking about intercepts, and I'm talking about, in this case, an x-intercept, I want to make sure that y is 0. So I just come up here and I say, okay, 4x minus 5 times 0 is equal to 40, or 4x, because this goes away, is equal to 40, or x is equal to 10. Now, I like to do things two ways, because quite frankly, I want 100 on this test. And by the way, if you get 100 on this test, I would like you to email me kenkraus at gmail.com. There's a, there's a link in the show notes. And I want to put you on my wall of fame. If you go to www.mrkraus.com, 
It's all one word. Mr. Kraus Math dot com. What you'll find is I have a wall of fame. There are only two kids that I've taught in 20 years, like over 2,000, 3,000 kids I've taught, and I've only had two kids get 100. And then I've taught, last year I got a couple of kids, this is S-E, I should probably, K-R-A-U-S-E. Um, there's a couple of kids I helped that last year that also got 100s, and they're on my wall of fame. So if you want to get on my wall of fame and you get 100, now you're going to have to send me proof. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to expect proof. If you don't send me proof, I don't put you up there. Uh, but I would like to do this a different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for y. So for, I'm going to solve for y and actually graph it to see if I'm right. Equals 40. So uh, let's see. I'm going to bring the 4y over and the 40 over. So I'm going to bring the... F I'm going to bring that 40 over. So I get 4x minus 40 equals 5y. And when I bring this over here, it becomes positive, and I bring, bring, bring this back over here, it becomes negative. And then I'm going to divide by 5, divide by 5, and divide by 5. So I will graph that. So I don't like you anymore. Goodbye. So long. Don't worry. All right. So um, it's 4 fifths, 4 divided by 5x minus 8, because 40 divided by 5 is 8. And hit Enter. And if I look, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The x intercept is right there. Ten comma zero. Done. All right. Sammy and Jeremy have ages that are consecutive odd integers. Now here is the thing you don't want to talk about with x. consecutive integers go x x plus 1, x plus 2, because that means we have to add 1 every time. With odd or even, you skip count. So with even, to go from 4 to 6 to 8, you skip count. Well, skip counting is adding 2. If you're going odd, you still have to skip count. 5 to 7 to 9, you skill, you skill. You still have to skip count, which means you add 2. So if J is Jeremy and he's the younger age, that's J, that's Jeremy, then who's the other kid? Sammy is two years, if Sammy is consecutive integers and he's older than that, then Sammy, sorry, I should have put Sammy over here, Sammy is Jeremy's age, but he's got to be two years older because we're skip counting, plus two. So Jeremy is J, Sammy is J plus two, and I want the product of their ages. This is that they're that are the product of their ages is 783. So if I take Jeremy and I multiply it times Sammy, I should get 783. Well, distribute, you get J squared plus 2J, and you get choice. Watch out. A population that initially has 20 birds doubles. Anytime you hear the word doubles, this is exponential growth. So if something doubles, let's say it goes from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32 to 64. Notice there's not a consistent amount between these. This is exponential growth, which one represents growth. Well, this is exponential growth, and this is exponential growth. Let's see what the other two are. This is, who the heck knows what this is? This is just designed to confuse you, and it's decay, so that doesn't make any sense. And this is linear growth. If something grows by the same amount every year, not a doubling factor or a tripling factor or a quadrupling factor, that's linear growth, and we're not talking about linear growth. So these are the two exponential growth questions. And there was one other piece to this problem, and that was this one right here. It started with 20 birds. Well, this one starts with zero birds, and this one starts with 20 birds. So choice three is the answer. Good work. Two more left. Two more left in this video. Yay! Oh, my God. It's so exciting. How are you guys doing, by the way? I hope you're kicking butt on this test. Remember, study, study, study. Work your butt off. So let's see. F of X is defined as... 2x minus 4, and it's going to go from 2 to 6. 
And those are inclusive. They have the equal to. So we want to include them. So the question says, what is the range? Well, in order to find the range, you got to plug in the extreme. So we're going to plug in a 2. So 2 times 2 minus 4 is equal to, that's 4 minus 4, that's 0. And then I'm going to plug in a 6. So 2 times 6 minus 4, that's 12 minus 4 is 8. So the range is going to go from 0 to 8. Choice 1, kids. Hope you got it right. That one's hard to do two different ways. Which state could be modeled by a linear function? Okay, a linear function, a linear function has to uh, increase by the same amount. Not by a percentage, by the same amount. So a bank balance grows by 5% per year. 5%, this is exponential. So no. The population of bacteria doubles. Doubling, we just talked about it. Doubling is exponential. The cost of a cell service plan is the base amount plus 12 cents per minute. That means, tw or 20 cents. 20 cents for the first minute. 20 cents for the second minute. 20 cents for the third minute. That number is not changing. And since that number is not changing, that is linear growth. And then let's see, the concentration of medicine in a person's body that decays. And right there, decays. That's exponential growth or decay. That's not going to be it. So when you're talking about linear growth, you're talking about, and here's your answer. When you're talking about linear growth, you're talking about the same amount. All right, kids, that's it. Number one is done. Hope you come back for number two. I hope you're studying. I hope you like my videos. I hope you like what we're doing. I don't even got to draw a picture yet. Wait till you see my crazy drawings. Hit the subscribe button for you. If you got a like, if you got a little like button, hit the thumbs up. Don't hit the thumbs down. Why would you hit the thumbs down? I'm just trying to help you. Uh, and I'm not that whiny. And uh, if you have a question for me, hit me up in the comments. I'll try to respond to them. All right. Goodbye, kids. It's been fun working with you, man. And bye-bye, Dunkin' Donuts.